Craven, Dave Campbell's Texas Football, here with Sonny Dykes, head coach of TCU and former cover boy of Dave yeah. Campbell's Texas Football Magazine. Uh, I want to ask you, um, you know, from 22 to 23, you've talked about the, the leadership and the lack thereof. Um, in today's football world, with the transfer portal and stuff, how hard is it to build leadership within a program? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the big thing is if you have a lack of leadership, really it's kind of the coach's fault. I mean, I think it was probably my fault last year that we didn't do a very good job developing those guys. Um, I think you, that's something you can't take for granted. I think, you know, you can't complain uh, we didn't have this kind of leadership. You have to be developing that 365 days a year in your program. Um, and you really got to have a, a process-driven uh, approach to doing that, you know, day in and day out. And so we certainly changed that way. I think we're much more intentional now on – putting our players in positions to, to learn how to become leaders. Um, we you know, have a leadership class now we do with, with most of our players. We've got, um, you know, doing everything that we can do to, to try to create a culture in our program where guys lead and followers follow, and that's okay, and everybody understands their role and, and is uh, really confident in their role and knows how to execute their role. And so it's been a, it's been a great uh, change for us and something I think is real positive, and I think it's had a – uh, positive impact on our program. We've kind of talked about it. Everybody wants to go play in the national championship game, right? But there were some hurdles that, that came your way afterwards. Um, do you feel like the team's kind of like back on schedule and, and back on track maybe this off season in a way that they weren't last year? Yeah. Yeah. You know, when you take over a program, typically, you know, for us in the past, we had taken over a program and been okay in year one and then really made a big jump in year two. It happened um, really everywhere I'd been in the past, La Tech, uh, Cal, uh, SMU, you know, we'd always made a big jump from year one to year two. Uh, it was hard to, to jump much from 13-2 and two in year one, you know, to, to go and win in the national championship. But it was, um, you know, it was, it was challenging because I think the expectations were really high for last year's team, and we didn't feel like we fulfilled those expectations. And, you know, as a coach, your job is to get your players to play as well as they're capable of playing. We just didn't feel like we did that last year. And so I think this, this year – We've got a different approach and a fresh approach. And, you know, it's all about going out there and just playing your very best and, and being the best version of yourself that you can be and, and seeing where that takes you. And I think the great thing in 22, we didn't set any limits. You know, we just talked about a, a one-week-at-a-time approach. And you know, we woke up one day and we're 12-0 and 0 and playing in the conference championship and then win the semifinal game and go play for the whole thing. And so, you know, this year's team, I, I, we, we're having that same kind of mindset. You know, it's all about – Let's get better every day. Let's get better uh, every chance we have. Um, and then kind of see where that takes us. Yeah, your dad obviously coached in the Big 12, kind of when it right formed. What do you think he'd say about, like, the conference and how it looks now and being a media day in Vegas and that kind of stuff? What do you think uh, those old-timers would think about yeah. what this looks like now? It's a lot different. Yeah, uh, clearly a lot different. I mean, you know, it, the, the Big 12 has had a lot of different uh, versions of the league. You know, you go and you look at, when the league was first put together, obviously you had you know Nebraska and Texas A&M and some teams that have been gone for a while in Colorado now who's coming back and in Missouri and it's just it was a little bit um, kind of strange to watch all the teams break off and then watch some of them come back and others settle in other places and obviously with Texas and Oklahoma leaving, it's, the league looks a lot different now than it did. Um, but I think you know Brett Yormark's done a great job. He's been very shrewd in the teams that he's added. I think all the teams uh, bring tremendous value to the Big 12. They've all been programs that have been very successful and have the capabilities to be successful. Um, and so, you know, I feel like the league is really, really strong. I think we're on a solid foundation. I think the members within the league work together. We respect each other. Um, and I think that's going to lead to um, to a lot of long-term success. Do you think that's the advantage for the Big 12 right now is there's not like a – a separation between like haves, have-nots, or whatever the right word is. Uh, how do you feel like this conference kind of matches up with each other? Yeah, I think parity. I think parity is the word in the Big 12. Um, you know, you look at the last uh, six representations in the conference championship game, in the last three conference championship games, it's been six different teams. You know, no league can say that. Um, you know, the worst team in the league can beat the best team in the league. That doesn't happen really in, in some of the other leagues and most of those games really aren't even competitive and and that's the one thing I think makes our, our league unique and makes it different and makes it really strong is is that if look if you don't play well you're going to get beat doesn't matter who you are and doesn't matter who you play. 
What are the advantages uh, for a team, for a coach, with the expanded playoff and having a little bit better route or easier route uh, to the postseason? You don't have to be 12-0, and 0, right, for example. Uh, does that change the way you approach uh, non-conference, or is it just kind of the same? Yeah, I think it can. I think it could lead to more you know, quality non- non-conference matchups, which I think is good for college football and makes sense. You know, I do think at some point we've all got to be scheduling the same way. You know, I think the you know the SEC for a number of years has talked about going to a nine a nine game conference schedule, and, and it hasn't happened. Uh, it doesn't make sense for some leagues to have a uh, an eight game schedule, and some leagues have a nine game schedule. And you know, and so uh, you know, I think there needs to be as much um, consistency across college football as possible, because that leads to the best outcome. And, and I think at the end of the day, everybody ought to want the best teams to, to represent. Uh, you know, college football and the college football playoff. And, and I think the only way we're going to get there is, is by trying to create as, as fair of a system as we possibly can create. I feel I'm guilty of this as well. I feel like when we talk about changes in college football, we talk about the negatives and what we miss and what yeah, we liked yeah, about yeah. back in the day. What do you like about kind of the modern college football compared to the one you walked into as a coach a long time ago? Well, you know, you have to adapt, and you got to keep up, and you got to change, and you got to be innovative, and I think those are all things that, that we enjoy doing. We enjoy kind of thinking outside the box and trying to figure out a, a different way of, of, you know, being successful and, and a way to do it uh, consistently. And so, you know, it's, it's fun because the league, everything's changing all the time. I mean, you look around college football, and there's probably been as much change in the last three years as there was in 30 years before that. And and, and so, I mean, literally everything is changing from the way it's structured to the way, um, you know, comp- the, the players are compensated to all the things with the, you know, explosion of staff sizes and the ability for all these different guys to coach. And I mean, there's a lot of things going on in, in obviously recruiting and NIL and, you know, just a lot of things that are out there. But it, to me, it's a great opportunity to, to try to do something different and to build a better mousetrap and, and to you know, put ourselves in the best situation we can be in to to be successful. And then lastly, kind of what are your expectations for this team as being around them? Like, what do you think the ceiling is for this group? You know, it it reminds me a lot of the 22 team in terms of just um, a tight group of guys that really like each other, care about each other, you know, and and what I want to see is just us maximize our potential, whatever that is. I have no idea what that, what that's going to look like. As I said earlier, we didn't do that in 23. You don't ever want to have a team, you don't ever want to coach a team that doesn't reach its potential. You feel like that that's your fault as a coach, and, and it's not a good feeling. So, you know, we're excited uh, about this group. Um, you know, as I said, they it's a tight group. The guys really like and respect each other. I think we've got experience in some key spots. I think we've got more depth than we've had. I love the co- competitive nature of this group. And, and uh, you know, I know with this we're going we're gonna to go play Stanford week one. And we're going to give it our best shot and see how it goes. And I think our guys will be excited to play that game and see where that takes us. I lied. I got, I got one more. Uh, I see Kate over there, your wife, obviously. Uh, how important is family and, and just community and, and keeping a balance as a head coach in today where I would imagine you could spend 23 hours a day if you wanted to doing this? Yeah, thing? yeah. I think, I mean, look, you know, Kate and I are a team, and I think we try to, to approach it that way. I think uh, – you know, she does a great job with her players. She's around a lot. My family's around the office. Uh, I want our players' families to be around. I mean, the, look, the, college football is a big business. It's a very uh, competitive game, and you have to do everything you can to give yourself the best chance to win. But at the same time, I mean, we really do believe it's, it's a family thing. Uh, you know, really believe it's about watching young people accomplish their dreams, graduate from college, you know, provide more opportunities for them and their families moving forward. And so, you know, it's not all about the bottom line. And uh, and so we want to, you know, enjoy the process as much as we can. We're going to work incredibly hard, but we're also going to mutually respect each other and work incredibly hard together and and, uh, and try to have a good time. I mean, there's nothing wrong with, with enjoying your work and showing up every day and, and uh, you know, and, and creating a family atmosphere. And, and it's something that's really important to me personally and certainly it's important to Kate and something we believe in. Thanks, sir. Okay, appreciate you. Mike, appreciate you. Yep.